we're on easy street and it feels so sweet because the world is but a treat when you're on easy street welcome to the easy street radio show hosted by rob scribner grab a cup of coffee and let's get started our videos are made possible by ranger rob poopy bags available at amazon right now Hello everyone and welcome to Easy Street. You can find Easy Street on Good Talk Radio, Spreaker, and many other platforms. And we'd love to see you and listen to you So uh, and hear your comments. So uh, today's video, or today's podcast, um, first of all, there's a video version of this if you go to Ranger Rob Country Living, or you can uh, get the audio, obviously, through all the different platforms. And of course, Good Talk Radio. And today, is the day I'd like to talk to millennials. Now hear me out. First of all, what I'm gonna talk about um, will be stuff that you're not used to. Um, first of all, remember, first of all, I, I respect the fact that we we come from different backgrounds and obviously there's an age difference. I'm just pleading to you about a few things here that I, I hope I get your curiosity up enough to uh, do some of the things I'm going to ask you that if you can find the time, and I really wish you would, uh, to look some things up. And I'm talking about things on the media that you have access to and etc. So one, I'm going to tell you about some stuff I, I suggest that you get a chance to watch. Because I know that your schools are different than they were when I was in school. And I'm asking you please to be respectful. The only difference between probably me and you is I've grown up, uh, we had debate teams, we were able to listen to everybody's stories and stuff. So I'm trying to go into that mode of, uh, I'll talk about a few things and then um, hopefully you'll follow up and see uh, if what I'm saying is true or not. And, and that's all I'm asking. So this is uh, not an intimidation, this isn't, uh, belittling you nor my generation or anything like that but I'm begging you if you're like 35 years old and younger to please hear me out just hear me out and please take a look at some of the things that I'm gonna ask you to go look at and and do it when you have time when you feel like uh, oh, I could use a little bit of uh, um, mind-blowing information uh, I, I know you come from a generation of uh, uh, staying at home longer, uh, the, the work environment's different, um, the schools are insane, the uh, universities have got um, kind of a unique way of looking at things. So, um, so the first things I'd like to talk to you about is I know all of you guys love YouTube and uh, uh, you know, YouTube has its issues about uh, private, I mean, as far as freedom of speech and stuff like that. And, uh, but <clears throat> there's some great information I'd like to have you look at. If you're a millennial, and this is before the elections, and this is during uh, uh, all this talk about socialism and stuff like that. And I understand, I do, please, and realize I understand um, your feelings on some of this stuff. I have... Uh, a grandson who's close to hitting 20 and and, and I just I'm a little amazed sometimes that there's so many things you haven't been told about and so I'm not gonna tell you what they are uh, I'm gonna tell you a story but um, this is just information raw information that you could go look at right now anytime you want and and I'm not gonna give you the link I'm not gonna I'm gonna I'm hoping to give you the curiosity to maybe take a look at what I'm talking about. So there is a fact out there that I hope that we can both agree on, that history will replay itself. And it's always been true for thousands of years. History replays itself. And hopefully history can teach us to make better decisions in the future. So our economy, everything, uh, uh, it's going on our politics are really crazy however they've been like this before 
you probably don't know that you say oh this is unique this is uh, all that. and it's like no it's not unique at all um, all this uh, protesting and all this other stuff um, being against or not happy with the president or leadership you have uh, or the government or jobs and things like that absolutely nothing new here the only difference is, is we have more of a media a worldwide media than before so what my first thing I'd like to ask you to go look at and please when you do it um, it's more than a 10 minute video I can tell you that for sure so give yourself the time to either listen to it or give yourself the time to listen to portions of it the first one will be a documentaries about the depression that's it <laughs> the depression however when you watch that, um, I want you to understand you know, how the depression happened, but I want you to see the results. So if you find the right ones, there's a couple of great documentaries about the 1929 depression. And what I w want you to really pay attention to is they'll talk about the stock markets and how it crashed and the, and the unemployment got real high. And it'll talk about the effects of the United States. But I want to go beyond that. Um, because everything that was going on there, by the way, is going on today. The economy was bad. Unemployment was bad. There was no jobs. Um, the government was being questioned. And that's where like the New Deal and things like that happened later on, if you've heard about that. Um, uh, a lot of Americans wanted social programs to help them. And that's where welfare and unemployment got started back then in those days. So, uh, uh, not all government programs are evil. I mean, there was this uh, like common sense, like right now there's so many people out of work that we need stimulus checks to help people just stay above water. Same, it's the same. So what I want you to pay attention to is because of our depression, how it affected the other countries. For example, when we went into our depression, um, it affected Germany big time they went into a depression too. And then it caused in other countries, not just Germany, also felt the effects of our depression. And then the craziest things happened back then to all the different countries. Obviously, you know that Germany uh, had the rise of Hitler and, and, and it, it takes people to allow someone like that to become, get into power. And, and you have to ask yourself, how did that happen? These documentaries will show you and tell you and use the same words that you guys are all using um, how the people were desperate and people were uh, thinking about now instead of the future and so they wanted change and so like how could Germany how could the Germans agree to be, you know start dominating other countries and 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 also uh, causing you know uh, um, diversity to go away and also hurt them you know and, and literally kill a whole nother race and, and you ask you how could that have happened and it's by the way it's it's the same history as the history going on today but there was other countries of um uh, there was Mussolini a whole bunch of other leaders and countries that that started changing and 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 wanting the government to, to run things and stuff <clears throat> The funny thing is, 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 is years later after they actually got some of that, they fought hard to get out of it. They, it's one of those things is be careful what you ask for. You might just get it. <laughs> so I'm asking you to go look at history, to go back and it's there on YouTube and type in uh, uh, American Depression or, or 1929 depression and, and and sit through those documentaries some of it's hard to follow i understand but when you hear the descriptions of what was going on with the other countries you will recognize it you'll go you'll hear the same words you'll hear the words uh, socialism fascism um, uh, races things like that all the same stuff you're hearing today it's just a little bit different because our media is so big so that's the first thing I ask you to do is, is look at 1929 depression and how it happened and how it affected everybody. 
The second one I'd like you to look on YouTube is literally look at documentaries about World War II and how it happened and what was going on. And, and not so much of the, of I want you to pay attention to the governments because obviously we're all upset about government and, and um, things being fair and money and, and equal, everybody being equal and all that stuff. <clears throat> um, please go to uh, um, and, and look at the documentaries on YouTube about World War II so you can understand what it was all about and how it became why certain countries, uh, why Germany went to certain countries and took on other countries, why Russia became a, a, a socialist, uh, a communist kind of country, how all this happened. And when you really listen to it, really listen to it, you'll understand that everything that went on back then is happening today. A little bit different. I mean, as far as it's not the same countries, not the same peoples. But the story is the same. And that's all I wanted. To, I'm not going to preach about it. I'm just asking you, would you please, please go look at that stuff. Don't, I'm not trying to be like, I know better than anybody else. I'm just saying that history is replaying itself. And you may not feel it. You may not realize it. And that's one of the reasons why some people are trying to hide it. But it's happening again, and it's happened again, and again, and again. Throughout thousands of years, it's actually happened over and over and over. Even when it comes to religion and, 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 and churches and stuff, some of the things that are going on today has happened before. So that's, that's all I want to talk about on that. But please, don't stop the video because you might, I might have triggered you or something. I'm not trying to. I'm asking you, you ask me to understand what's going on through, you know, through your feelings and, and thoughts. I'm asking you, I am, and I'm trying, and I'm going to continue to try, and I do understand a lot of it because I've left my mind open enough to hear it. I'm asking you, please, please go do some research on those two subjects, the Depression and World War II and how it affected other countries and, and what happened. It's it's there. Um, it's not going to be hidden from, it's not something YouTube's uh, taken off or anything like that. It's really wonderful information to understand what's going on today, which may help you decide what kind of leadership you really want in the future. Uh, the one thing as is, is, is common now is don't vote or do things on how you feel about an individual, but look at their actions and ask them, are they actually doing better things for me in the future? Um, but don't go by personalities. If you don't like a personality of, of a leader and stuff, that's not a good idea. What you really want to see is their results. So the next thing I want to do is tell you a little story. And bear with me on this. I'm going to kind of make this up. I'm going to I'm going to talk about basketball. <laughs> I know it's the best thing I can think of. I want to let's say the United States was stripped to just being a brand new country. All the things we ever do, football, basketball, all this stuff is gone now. And, and it was all stripped away from us. However, we all remember what it used to be like. OK, so suddenly, let's say a bunch of Polish, let's say the Polish people have come into our country and they're going to start up new programs. First of all, everybody gets paid equal. So all of us make a dollar a day. So we may have different tasks in our life, whatever. And I'm just using that number. It could be $10 a day. It doesn't matter. But let's say a dollar a day, right? And so there's a bunch of young folks and I'm going to give you the name Sparky. So in this, <laughs> in this video, your name is going to be Sparky. Okay. Because I want you to relate to this as Sparky. So the Polish people come in, leadership, government, let's say they're the one, I'm just picked a country. And uh, they said, well, we're going to pay everybody in the United States a dollar. That's our new government standard. And housing will, um, will cost you, you know, whatever. It will all have equal, everything's equal. 
Everybody makes a dollar. No rich people, no poor people. Everybody gets a dollar, right? Okay, so got it? <clears throat> so let's say they come along and they find a bunch of young folks and say, we wanna start basketball. And your job in society will be a basketball player. And that's, what you, that's how you are uh, contributing to the society at your dollar a day. That's your new assigned government task to be a entertainment basketball team for the new America. <clears throat> so it goes, all right, in order to play basketball, here's our rules. We want you to wear overalls, sweatshirts, t-shirts, and heavy boots. And everybody's going to jump on one foot. And we're going to play basketball. And all of us kind of like, okay, the government says we're going to play with overalls, sweatshirts, t-shirts, and hop on one foot to play basketball. That's my job. And I get a dollar a day. Cool. I'll do it. So the season starts. It's televised and all that stuff. And you guys are all hopping around one foot, sweating like a pig, doing the whole works, all that. And they say, a couple of weeks go by and Sparky comes up to the leadership. And Sparky says, and that's you or me, you know, uh, this would be a little better if we're not hopping on one foot. Uh, basketball in the old days used to be people running around on two feet and, it, and the action is just as good. And actually, uh, you'll see a lot more clever plays and stuff like that. And the government comes back after a week or so and says, you know what, Sparky, that was a great idea. You're now in charge of all the basketball teams and make sure that they learn how to play basketball without hopping on one foot. And you need to, you've got, you're now in charge of this and uh, you're still playing basketball, but now you're the leader of making sure nobody hops on one foot. Um, you're still only going to make a dollar a day just because you, you know, you're doing this and you're now adding to this. I still want you to do. So, okay. It's like, all right, I can do that. <laughs> So now basketball is you're, you're in overalls, sweatshirts, a hat, and but now they're using two feet. And so a couple of uh, games go by and Sparky goes, well, I got this new job and make sure everybody's on two feet. I'm going to let leadership know that maybe we shouldn't have to wear hats because we're, you know, we're wearing scarf hats and we're sweating like pigs out there. And uh, people can't stay and play long enough because they're getting overheated. Maybe I can convince them we don't have to wear these scarf hats anymore. And so it goes to the leadership and says, hey, I want you to, you know, could we play this without scarf hats? In the old days, they didn't have scarf hats. And it, we really get warm out there. And you'll find maybe the players will last longer when they're playing. So a week or two goes by and the leadership comes back and says, Sparky, we've decided you're right. People don't have to wear sweater hats anymore. Uh, and uh, so, but you now have a new job. We want you to make sure everybody puts their hats away and make sure they're not running around on one foot, uh, you know, j hopping on one foot. You have now in charge of all this. And I want you to do all this and stuff. And, and so um, now, Sparky, you've got two new uh, jobs of maintaining playing basketball, of course, and uh, maintaining that nobody uh, hops on one foot anymore and making sure that everybody has the right protocol for not wearing hats. And so, but you're still only paid a dollar. That's just because you're now contributing. So time goes on and, uh, uh, you, you know, the t players are still hotter than heck and having a hard time stuff, but this, you know, they're on two feet, so they don't have to wear hats anymore. And that's a lot better. And so Sparky, you, you're, you're kind of like, you know, I kind of, kind of like to uh, tell them that maybe you should just let us wear t-shirts and a short because we're just, it's too hot. And, and, and we're wearing these boots and stuff. And it's like, I don't know if I want to tell them, but uh, um, so I'm going to go to the leadership and says, you know, guys, I, I got another great idea, but uh, you've already given me all these responsibilities. Can I uh, get something for all this? Um, and and because uh, I got a feeling you you want me to do more work. <clears throat> and so they might come back and say, "Tell you what, we'll change. You're still a dollar a day, but we'll let you have 
a little extra bread from the stores uh, for free and uh, uh, so what you know for this new idea and so what's your new idea well let's have basketball players wear shorts in a t-shirt um, and uh, those will they'll be cooler and it would be easy to identify them and stuff like that and it'll be less clothing they have to wear and the players will probably last longer so the you know the uh, government goes back and gets some ideas comes back and says uh sparky we like that idea too and uh so <clears throat> what i want you to do now is is you have the responsibility of doing making sure everybody has shorts t-shirts and are not hopping on one foot and aren't wearing a real warm hat anymore and that's now your new job for the whole you know, league um you still only make a buck um, but you've now got all these new responsibilities uh, however we're going to give you some uh, uh, two loaves of extra bread a, a, a week i mean uh, that's the least we could do right <clears throat> so uh you go on it's like all right well that's i got something out of it this time so he's got all these jobs he's got to do all this stuff to maintain the league and play basketball too and and it's like one more thing he'd like to go tell the leadership about is like these big heavy boots we're wearing i love to tell them that uh i don't want to wear these heavy boots anymore and the people would actually be you know more um, limber and more uh, able to get around the floor more and, and it would mark up the floor so much if they wore things like tennis shoes <clears throat> but I, I don't know if i want to tell the government I don't think I want to tell the leadership of this because it would just be another job for me and everybody's being paid a dollar and I got all this extra work um, I don't think I'm gonna tell them I, I think I'm gonna keep it to myself I have no incentive to, to want to tell them any more changes or how to make something better or how to invent something because it's all equal plane <clears throat> And think about that. Would you, as Sparky, want to take on all this responsibility, yet everybody else is getting e exactly the same thing? How do you think things would be if we were all equal pay, <clears throat> had no incentive to do something special, and um, because it'd either be more work or I'd be asked to do things beyond what everybody else is doing, and yet I'm still only getting a dollar a day. So I ask you, that is what communism and socialism is all about. Now, you gotta remember the higher leadership, they're living a pretty good life, but to try to get 99% of the population equal, what do you think we we're just talking about basketball. How would that uh, um, show up in learning how to build rockets or computer systems or better technology for cars, uh, better technology for video games? Um, and what if we're all just making a buck and some of these things that we have in life right now, like, like the video games and like uh, uh, really nice televisions and things like that, what do you think is going to happen um, when everybody's got an equal amount of money and like a, a dollar a day and, and a television is like worth 500 bucks how long do you think it'll take before you could even buy a television and what sacrifices would you make like less food whatever so you could actually have a television in your household and you know your house is still not free part of that dollar a day is paying for your rent your food all these things and uh but everybody's equal so it's one of those you could have your own incentive of like well i i won't play video games so i could or not even have a video machine so i could save money to maybe buy a television you can see this life w would after a while people are gonna and, and this is the same thing i'm telling you history replays itself are pretty soon gonna say well we want more in life I want, I mean, I have some great ideas in my head. I have ins, uh, inspirational things for the world, but 
I need something to kind of give me the incentive to want to participate and make the make the community better. And if I work twice as hard as the person next to me, and yet I'm only getting a dollar a day, I don't I don't want to participate. I don't want to grow. I don't want to take on more responsibility when I'm only making a dollar a day and my neighbor is making a dollar a day and they just sit around the house and do nothing. They just sit around and watch TV and drink beer. Yet I'm out trying to make better basketball teams or better computers and all that stuff. But they get a dollar and I still only get a dollar. That is socialism in a nutshell. And so a lot of countries that went that direction thought it was a great idea, but then realized, wait a minute, what have I done? So that's my little story just to give you a comprehension of what that stuff is. Oh, that can never happen here. Once again, at the beginning of the video, I asked you or podcast here to go watch those documentaries and you'll say, Yes, it will happen here. And yes, it has happened in other countries. And it could happen again easily. History is replaying itself. And I know you can't, it's hard to believe. It's like, no, 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 this is different. We're going to do it totally different. Well, that's what they said in those other countries too. So what I'm suggesting is, Please just take, I'm, I'm asking you to take maybe one or two hours out of your time to do the homework, to sit back, eat some popcorn, whatever, and watch some documentaries. And then listen to them closely, play them back if you have to, and you will hear the same terminologies, the same words, the same concerns, the same uh, problems we're having today. However, you get to see the results of those decisions back then and how it affected everyone. And we've all fought so hard to get out of. And now we're being brought right back into it. And the same thing could go for looking at documentaries about the 60s, about the flower power back in those days and racism and stuff. If you watch those, you'll see some facts in history that would like surprise you. We were all trying to get integrated. We were all trying to be diversified and we were getting there and we loved it. We started working side by side with all kinds of diverse kind of people. And we fought for that. And those diverse people fought for that. If you watch the de uh, documentary, you'll see how that's what it was all about in the 60s. And yet now, everything that all of us fought for is being challenged. And then the final thing I just wanted to bring up is freedom of speech. Now that's something that really is unique to our country. That's what makes us special. And I'm asking you that instead of being triggered or being upset by a different opinion, everyone should have the freedom to talk about what they want to talk about. I mean, every subject. And if you don't like it in the old days, we just turned the channel. We turned it off. We listened to a different platform. It was just that simple and it still is. But every organization, every opinion, uh, whether it's atheist or Christians, all of them in our country have always had freedom of speech. And so that's really what makes United States so special. And I, once again, if you do some homework, use YouTube, ask yourself, do other countries have the freedoms we have? Even the things that maybe I don't agree with you about, you have the right to talk about them here 
in the United States. And that is special. That is one of the hardest, but the very first amendment is freedom of speech. It was so important back then that they put that there. And the other one is obviously the bare arms. There's a reason for that. When you watch the documentaries I asked you to watch, or the first thing you'll always notice is those countries took your guns away. They did it in they did it in Germany. They did it in many other countries. Then they took over the people. As long as you have that those two amendments right there, you're protected to make sure that our government doesn't go amok. Because there's nothing better than having the government a little bit afraid of you, the people. Keep them <laughs> in line. And so, yes, I know there's people that misuse freedom of speech or guns, things like that. But um, those are also protections for all people. All individuals that have that freedom to speak their mind and the freedom to protect themselves from invaders and their own government. And that's amazing, don't you think?